do one hour, then a discussions and another hour. Okay. Hello, everybody. Uh, thank all organizers to, to allow me to present this uh, talk. Uh, it's very hard. In fact, I was uh, really very idealistic and uh, uh, accepting this uh, work because it, it's really an extremely huge piece of information and data that exists on the subject. Okay? So I will try to do my best, but please do not complain if I forget uh, a lot of things. So uh, the lecture, there will be two lectures. One is more introductory lecture, and we will <coughs> discuss a little bit, few words about the discovery of STM, STS, uh, uh, count some uh, uh, other scanning methods. Uh, then I will give some theoretical uh, background to STM, STS, and then after giving some well-known examples of, of use of STM, STS in uh, 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 condensed matter physics, I will give the most important, to my opinion, past results uh, on, of STM on uh, superconductors. And the second lecture will be devoted more to uh, recent and advanced uh, results. So, uh, you know, it's an old story for those, as many of you were not born yet in 1982, but it is not so far that uh, Binning and Rohrer suggested uh, uh, this uh, simple device, this is a, a drawing of their device, uh, a, a thin conducting tip uh, scanning along the surface of uh, a conducting material and between a tip and a sample there is a bias which is applied with an external circuit and there is a current of quantum origin called tunneling current that flows between the tip and the sample provided that the tip is very close to the sample. The key does this effect, the tunneling effect, it was known f for many decades before this date, but the, the key point was to how to scan the tip and how to control the distance between the tip and the sample. And there were several strategies at that time, and the strategy that won was these piezoelectric materials which allowed by applying an external electric field to, uh, <coughs> to change the, the, their dimensions and then approach, for instance, with this element, approach or retract the tip or with this element to scan it in a X or Y direction. Okay? So with this strange device, uh, uh, these two people were able to, to, to measure first, to, to, to produce several scan lines on uh, the surface of, uh, uh, of a material, and then they, they showed that uh, the vertical scale could be extremely fine, as here about 5 nanometers, and that they are able to, 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 to see atomic steps on the surface. It was really something exceptional at that time and uh, uh, almost one year ago they did the same on the naked surface of uh, silicon 111 and silicon 111 uh, is, is one of the famous substrates for, um, for um, electronic devices and they showed that silicon 111 doesn't hold but reconstruct it is in a very strange uh, 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 organization which is called 7x7, seven 7x7 by seven, seven by seven reconstruction and you, what you see here it's a un atomic uh, a unit cell of this reconstructed surface. Okay? All these lines as you see they were produced in the following way that time so a plotter was used then the, the lines were cut with the scissors glue it, to, uh, put, glue it on, the, on the thicker carton and that the carton put together in order to produce uh, those, those lines, okay? So uh, the atomic resolution was clearly reached and silicon one, uh, seven by seven reconstruction revealed. Uh, by the way, please stop me and ask me questions if something is unclear. So we are in uh, 1983 and in 1986, three years after, they get a Nobel Prize together with Ernst Ruska who knows Ernst Ruska? 
maybe few of you, yes, for sure. Uh, and the price was shared one half to Ruska and just one quarter, just one quarter to Binning and Rohrer because Mr. Ernst Ruska invented uh, nothing but scanning electron microscope in 1933. Okay, so some got Nobel Prize very fast, others waited for a while. But the, the, the justice was done because this man is at least as important as those two. Okay, so back to the STM. So this is typical example you can get from the internet. So you need a very sharp tip, uh, as sharp as atomic. In fact, it's not true, but let's, let's uh, come to this back a little bit later. So you need a sharp tip made of conducting material. You, you, and your, your studies are restricted to conducting material as well, because you need to, uh, the, 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 the current to flow between them. And this is the current that you amplify and you convert usually to voltage. And then you use it in some control system to counter-react uh, 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 the, the position of the tip in lateral and in uh, vertical <coughs> scale. Okay, so what is measured? The measured is tunneling current between a metallic tip and a conducting sample. Very Soon after discovery of STM, a uh, different uh, f a whole family of scanning microscopes appear. And one which is very important is atomic force microscope. Because when the tip is put to a very proximity of a, of a surface, not metallic in this case, not necessarily metallic, you have chemical forces. You have Van der Waals forces that operate between the tip apex and and uh, 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 the surface. And then if this tip is linked to a very, uh, um, a very light cantilever, a very elastic one, then by, uh, by applying a light beam, a laser beam, for instance, on the back side of this cantilever, and then the, the laser beam is diff uh, um, diffused, scattered from this, and goes to the photodetector, then angular modification of the position of cantilever, which is due to a very tiny force between the tip apex and, and the surface, could be detected uh, 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 due to the deviation of the uh, uh, laser beam. Okay? And in this case, this signal is proportional to the force, because you have a force balance in static between this uh, uh, elastic force of the deflection of cantilever and uh, a force operating between the tip and, and, and uh, the surface. Uh, a, a sort of variant of, of this technique is, for instance, a so-called magnetic force microscope, where the force also between a cantilever and a tip, uh, a magnetic tip in this case, is just a magnetic interaction between the tip and some magnetic surface, which could be, for instance, in this case, a ferromagnet with the oppositely directed domains. <coughs> okay? uh, a less intrusive techniques for magnetic imaging uh, were uh, um, uh, developed later on, uh, either using a squid, a squid, uh, uh, Dieter Kölle uh, told us today about squids, so the squids could be coupled to the so-called uh, flux transformer, which is, uh, uh, which is uh, ended up with a uh, pickup coil. This is all made of superconducting material. And since the squid is, is uh, sensitive to the total flux crossing the, the, this loop, then the modification of the flux here is immediately detected by squid. So uh, then you can scan this squid on the top of the surface of the material, or reversely, because this is usually uh, is kept fixed, you, you, you scan the, the, the sample, which is fixed on the top of some piezo scanner, X, Y, and X controlled as well. Okay? And then what you measure is, of course, the, a part of the flux that penetrates the, this uh, pickup loop that is usually made as small as possible in, or, in order to get a better spatial resolution. A variant of this method is a so-called scanning hole probe microscopy in which the squid device is replaced just by a, a two-dimensional electron gas 
uh, mounted in uh, in a whole probe geometry. So you have a current that that, that flows, and the electrodes are. Uh, put perpendicular to the current and then the whole voltage can be registered as the function of position of this small hole probe uh, with respect to the sample and then you have an uh, imaging of the perpendicular component of the uh, uh, magnetic field. Okay, last but not least there is a very recent uh, uh, variant of, of this squid uh, microscopy which is basically a squid, okay, but a very tiny one. So this was developed in uh, Weizmann Institute by uh, Elise Eldorf, and many people uh, sitting here know, know him. And uh, uh, Jonathan Anahori, his former PhD student, he is MC member of this cost uh, action. So uh, uh, these are quite famous people. So the basic principle of this squid is that you start with a pipette made of quartz, okay? You just hit the pipette, the apex of the pipette, you pull on it and by doing this in a proper way you can get a very tiny pipette, very tiny cylinder at the end that you cut and you ob uh, obtain something like this, okay, made of quartz and this diameter depending on your condition could be as small as few tenths of nanometers, still having a hole inside. Okay, this is the result. We need just uh, uh, to ask, to thank Ernst Ruska that allows, allows us to see that it, it, it is indeed... Few tenths of micrometers. No, no. Few tenths of nanometers. Few tenths of nanometers. Yes. That's the matter... Angstroms. Huh? That's angstroms. Yes, yes. Okay, no, no, no. no not angstroms. It, it means few hundreds of angstroms. Yes. Few hundreds... Few tens. Yes, few okay. tens of, not tens, yeah, no, tens no, no. of nanometers. So, sorry for, for my Russian English. No, no. So, uh, it could be French as well. <laughs> so, uh, now, uh, starting from this, they do a very simple, very simple, uh, um, simple to say uh, device. They put, they have an evaporator of uh, superconducting material, lead or niobium. Okay, and they put uh, uh, this uh, capillary uh, uh, perpendicular to the uh, evaporation beam, and in such a case they deposit one of electrodes, and by shadow nothing is deposited on another side. Now they turn it 180 de degrees, and they deposit another electrode, and by shadow nothing is deposited in between. And then they put the tip in the front of the beam and they deposit a, a, a ring, which is a superconducting one. And basically you, 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 you realize the squid because you have a coil and you have uh, two small junctions between them if you do this. So it's easy to say, it's difficult to do, but concept is very simple. Then with this pickup coil, uh, which is, well, you don't need the pickup coil, this, the squid is your own pickup coil. You can uh, amplify the signal, in fact, all, there is another thing which is very important and uh, uh, very difficult, is how to amplify the signal. Uh, there is a whole electronics behind, which is not simple, okay? But at the end of the day, or the end of the year, or few year PhD, you uh, end up with a, with a uh, microscope that has a very nice uh, uh, special resolution, but last uh, uh, but not least, it has a very nice uh, uh, frequency response because squids are fast. So you can uh, uh, scan, for instance, here a surface of uh, a, a sample which is a superconducting stripe made of lead, and in this superconducting line, which is crossed by could be crossed by current, you you have some. Uh, a thinner part. You see here the width of this stripe is intentionally thin and then if you apply, a, 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 for instance here you put a magnetic field, you, you can see individual abricosa vortices, uh, we will discuss about a bit later, and then when you apply an external current through the line, you by, by Lorentz force you can push all those uh, vortices here and if you apply them more or you increase the external magnetic field you can create even avalanches on the, of vortices with this speed you cannot see them individually but you see that they all follow some tracks very very nicely okay and this is almost critical state where the flow of, uh, vortex uh, flow appears okay so this all done is with this such a system so this 
capillary is fixed on a quartz resonator that uh, is often used also by AFM people. Instead of using laser beam, they use a resonator and the tiny force is between the tip and the sample uh, provokes if there is a gradient of this force with respect to the distance, it provokes the uh, deviation of the resonance frequency of the resonator, which is detected. So instead of detecting the deviation of a laser beam, you detect a very tiny deviation of the resonance frequency of this quartz resonator. Okay? This allows you to approach this tip very close to the surface, as close that you already get atomic force microscopy signal, and that's enough. Then you can scan and measure magnetic part of the star. Okay? To be safe, for instance, once you, you, you can do it as a following, you can land on one position, second, third, and fourth, that limits your image, then you, you construct by computer a plane which corresponds to your zone, then you make a lift, let's say a few tenths of nanometers to be safe, and then you can scan very fast without a danger to, to crush your so uh, uh, so uh, dear uh, device. Okay, the nice thing of this uh, 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 device is it not only uh, it is a squid that is sensitive to, uh, uh, to magnetic flux, but it is also extremely sensitive to temperature. And because you have two jo Josephson junctions and, and critical current is temperature dependent. Moreover, what was shown by uh, Elise Eldoff and collaborators, then the thermal link in this geometry, when your tip is sitting very close to the sample, the thermal link between, radiational link between the tip coil, uh, the, the squid coil and the sample is larger than the link between this uh, end and the whole device. So you have a thermometer. And with this thermometer, for instance here, uh, a test experiment, you have uh, some uh, um, lithographed wires of uh, permaloy in blue here and copper in red. And what you see here, for instance, this is a, 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 this is a, a, a squid experiment. You see that permaloy, which is a ferromagnetic material and <laughs> magnetization vector is aligned in the axis, you only see very strong spots in positions where the, the magnetic field gets out of the sample, okay? And uh, you, don't see, you, you, you don't see copper, uh, uh, copper uh, wires. Now, if you, uh, if you put a current, electric current, this electric current by Biosavar will create a magnetic field and you can detect it immediately because the current flowing like this, you will have a part of magnetic field getting out of the screen and another part getting in, and this is coded as a blue and, and a red color, so you get immediately the magnetic picture of the story. And last but not least, now, by measuring the Josephson, uh, the, uh, the Josephson critical current of your device, instead of measuring uh, coil, you can get immediately a temperature uh, picture of your uh, of your situation, and you see that this permaloy uh, heats up because it's resistive. It's much more resistant than copper. So you get also thermal imaging. And uh, very recently they published this very nice paper in which they created a, a disk of graphene. Uh, this disk was, uh, uh, was made of encapsulated graphene on uh, uh, niobium, uh, oh sorry, on boron nitride. And the edges were cut by lithography, usual lithography. And this is a, a temperature map. So they inject a current here. Of course, you have a very high temperature here. You see it as bright spots. But what is very nice, that you can see some circles around some single points. And these single points are individual atoms that, uh, that uh, uh, scatter electrons and produce dissipation. So you can get individual, uh, you can get images of individual dissipators of uh, electronic waves. Okay, now we are back to, to our story since we are in methods. So how it looks like? So a typical device is, uh, it's just a mechanical device. Usually people do not have, do not like to have some electronics on it. Yes, please. Could you show the screen? Yes. Yes, it is. 
Yeah, yeah. It is stable in time because the defects are stable in time. Okay? So if you change the amplitude of current, the, it, it will change locally the picture, but each picture is, is a it's sort of interference pattern that you get. It's more complex, so I, I suggest, uh, otherwise I will, I will get stuck. I, I will suggest that we invite Elie Zeldov, we already did, or Jonathan to, to speak to us next time. Uh, so, a typical STM or AFM or MFM or SQUID is a device in which you have some, some block, inside of which you need a scanner, could be a different origin, a sample holder and a probe. And then all e electronics is uh, away. So it looks rather simple, but in fact, usually you need some extra condition of low temperature, uh, ultra high vacuum, high magnetic fields, ultra low noise, etc., etc., etc. And last but not least, of course, these these techniques are very much stress sensitive. So any mechanical vibration should be avoided. For instance, here uh, it, it it was done uh, owing some optical uh, dampers, uh, uh, some. Um, Sorry, some acoustic dampers usually used in optical experiments and some additional damping system which is inbuilt inside the, the, the STM. Okay, now uh, I go to a very uh, basic description of, of the uh, tunneling effect. Uh, the tunneling junction is a very simple thing. You have two materials separated by, by uh, uh, um, uh, some space, and this space is just the only condition that it should be larger than in the interacotomic distance, because otherwise you have a, a atomic contact, as Leandro told us before, and you have just a one atomic, two atomic, three atomic contact, and you have a, a regime which is not really tunneling, but just one, one, one atomic contact regime. So here we suppose that this distance between this electrode and this electrode is larger than that. So I just remind you that the single atom, it just could be approximated just by Coulombic potential between an ion and electric, an electron. And if you put a row of these, of these atoms by, by the sum of those, of those Coulombic potentials, you get some effective potential which is lower than, than the initial potential. That holds periodically for all uh, 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 all crystal except what, for what happens in between where this periodic potential is broken and then you have a higher uh, uh, amplitude of the potential. So it means that on, on the scale of quantum mechanics you have a barrier and then the electronic waves that Im imagine you have a metallic state, here you have planar waves here and there and here you have a barrier and if the height of this barrier exceeds the energy that correspond to the uh, wave function that you, uh, you, you speak about, then you need a, a, a tunneling, a quantum tunneling for electron to go from here to here and it is possible if the evanescent waves from both sides overlap Otherwise, you have a probability equal to zero. Okay, all this is realized in, in uh, locally in the STM when you have a sort of tip and a flat sample. Uh, by the way, very often the tip is flatter than the sample. In such a case, you inverse, and what you see is uh, 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 the footprint of your tip, and it happens uh, many times to us. And one time the, the shape of the tip was in, in, the, in the shape of an elephant. I'm not, I'm not cheating. It was an elephant and that time the pallet was in rows. So we saw, uh, we, we saw rose elephant. So we, we, we were told, okay, let us stop there and we let go to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> okay, some, some mathematics, I will skip it, but I will keep it for you, for students, for PDF. Uh, so, uh, in, in, everything can be understood in just quantum mechanical problem in one dimension. What is important here to, to see that uh, inside, inside the barrier, inside the barrier, the wave function decays, uh, uh, as a, as a expo ex decays exponentially with an exponent which is proportional to the space between two electrodes and proportional to this number k, which has a, a, a meaning of evanescent wave vector, which is square root of, uh, of this ratio. And usually this k is very, very uh, uh, small in nanometer minus one. It means that, that the tunneling current, which is uh, uh, 
exponentially dependent on this k, very fast decaying if you increase this distance. Okay? Typically, for good contacts, if you put here uh, v0 here is a, a work function, which is in vacuum about uh, uh, 3 to 5 electron volts, typically for metals. Okay? So this is the energy of your electron uh, 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 with respect to the Fermi level, so it's very small number. So typically you get uh, the mass of the electron multiplied by the work function and divided by h, uh, square, uh, h bar square. And this means that each time you, you retract your tip by one angstrom, your current intensity loses factors, uh, factor of three. So one angstrom, you have one third. One angstrom, you have one ninth. One, one ninth, okay. Uh, <laughs> one angstrom, one twenty seventh, and etc. etc. You see that very in, within one nanometer, you get all your current, or you lose all your current. So that explains the uh, the uh, a very high spatial uh, resolution of the STM because uh, the tip is made of atoms, and you should compare the intensity, the contribution of this atom with the contribution of that, which is separated by at least two, three angstrom of the crystallographic uh, uh, system, which is composed uh, the tip. Is you, you have a crystal locally, okay? So you can immediately see that this, this, the contribution of this plane to the total current is much smaller than the contribution of the last atom, just because of this, this very sharp dependence of current with respect to k. Okay, now we know how to proceed. We put the tip and we, we apply the voltage, of course, because if we don't apply the voltage, no current can flow. And then we, we measure as being error or did uh, this silicon 111 reconstructed surface. And it's very nice, we get atomic resolution, but there is something very strange appearing when you apply a positive voltage on the sample. So you bias sample positively with respect to the tip, you get this image, okay? When you apply negative voltage, you get also atomic scale image, but the, you clearly feel that the pattern is different. So clearly, the STM images depend on the applied voltage. So the question arises, what do we measure exactly with STM? And then, again, we need the quantum mechanics to understand this, but basically, what you will uh, understand that uh, if you consider elastic tunneling, what does it mean? It, if we consider one electronic state from the tip side and one electronic state on the uh, sample side, in order this electronic state to contribute to the tunneling, we need a Fermi rule to be satisfied. What does it mean? First, the energy should be the same. And second, initial state should be occupied and final state should be empty, right? Then, to do this, you, for instance, to go from left to the right, you have some probability, overall probability, times Fermi Dirac functions, the probability is the side, the, on the left side it is occupied, times the probability that on the right side it is empty, okay? Now, it is not a to, uh, to get the total current, you, you, you should sum over all such left and right states, and uh, you should also consider a back current, that it could be a back current flowing in the opposite direction, is the total current just a difference of forward and back current, and you end up with this simple formula, okay? And now you should integrate over all energies, because you apply a bias, you don't occupy only one state, you apply a bias, it means that you, you will change the Fermi energy of one material with respect to another by the wind of, of minus EV. And all electrons of this, from this window can, in principle, tunnel because they, in front, have empty states. Okay? So you should integrate, and when you integrate, you, okay, I skip this, but you will have them in, in, the, in the lesson. You can have this uh, uh, integral in which the total current will be uh, uh, an integral proportional to the matrix element of tunneling, proportional to the difference of Fermi functions at given energy minus EV minus Fermi function at given energy, and 
the density of states of the tip times the density of states of the sample and you should integrate over the, uh, all energies okay so it looks a little bit complicated moreover if you take a derivative which is often taken by by experimentalists it becomes really a little bit complicated i should even reduce the the the, the polis uh, um, uh, scale in order to fit this formula but if you look uh, very carefully this formula uh, in fact is that the derivative of the current of the voltage 